Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to GNR Central and today I want to talk about something that maybe you guys aren't familiar with. So when it came time to record Appetite for Destruction, Guns N' Roses needed a producer and they went through a lot of different people before they finally settled on Mike Klink. But there was a couple well-known people who could have produced Guns N' Roses or at least met with the band or offered the job that didn't end up getting the job at the end of the day. And one of those you guys probably know is Paul Stanley from KISS. We'll talk a bit about Paul Stanley in a second. But another well-known name might surprise you is that Nikki Six from Molly Crew was actually offered the job by Tom Zutat. So Tom Zutat, the guy who discovered Molly Crew and Guns N' Roses, wanted Nikki Six to produce Guns N' Roses. So here's what Nikki Six had to say about that, and he's talked about it a couple times, as was Tom Zutat in different interviews. Recently, Nikki Six and Tom Zutat were interviewed on Eddie Trunk's Series XM show. Tom Zutat told a story of trying to convince Nikki Six to be the producer of Appetite for Destruction. We had a moment here in the rainbow, which you'll see in I the mean, film, I'll, right? I'll, I'll share a little story, which is every successful band that I signed was in the back corner left booth. That's what okay? I just said, right? So, yeah, exactly. and, and you know, all the bands that I took to other booths failed. Like GNR was in that booth. Dokken was in that booth. And you know, it's funny in the movie, I don't know if people caught it, but uh, Motley Crue was opening for Dokken, and that made yeah, me chuckle. I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Tom, Thomas, do you remember you, me, Nikki? We went to go see Guns N' Roses, and we're like, dude, you got to sign these fucking guys. Yeah, I wanted Nikki to produce them. This I said it. This, this, was, remember this is one of those things where I, I, I No go, one knew who wow. the fuck they were. He, he came to me and asked me to produce them. And um, I liked them. Slash was hanging out at my house all the time. And um, you also asked me to write a song for that movie, uh, Out of Bounds. Yes. And that, I started writing that song. And then I, it turned into Nona, which is on Girls, yeah. Girls, Girls album. When my grandmother passed away and just kind of banished it. But I was so, I was strung out at the time. And I, I passed on GNR because I think I would have blown it i even yeah i even said to nikki i said look you know uh you know paul and gene want to produce the band but i want you to do it yeah but well thank you for that thank you for that opportunity you know? yeah but i i talked to mike clink years later when he produced a molly crew album and i said and i took you know he everybody knows that story and i said uh i said what was it like in the studio and he said i basically just pushed play <laughs> I just just yeah. pushed record. It, we called it, it, it uh, capturing lightning. It was capturing in a lightning in a bottle, yeah. and that's how our first album was too. It and, was like live off the floor. There it is. Now this isn't the only time that Nikki Six has talked about this incident. So even in his book, The Heroin Diaries: A Year in the Life of a Shattered Rock Star, around April of 1987, he said it was Van Nuys. It's six, he was in Van Nuys at 6:50 p.m. He said Slash came over earlier. I haven't told him this, but last year Tom Zutat asked me if I would produce the Guns album. I just turned him down flat. I was way too strung out to take it on, and it was all I could do was then was basically try to focus on Motley and staying alive. It's a good thing that I didn't do it. I know I could produce a great album for them, but not while I'm on drugs. I'm too effed up even for those guys. So Nikki Six said that Tom Zutat told me I was being considered to produce Appetite for Destruction, and I went to see them play at the Roxy, but I didn't think they were all that great, which kind of contrasted what he said in the earlier clip. The truth is, I was so out of it that I had no idea who was any good and who wasn't. F at that time, the most I would have been able to do as producer would have been pressing play on the tape machine. And Tom Zutat said, I was like a dog with a bone trying to get Nikki to produce guns because I thought they were the next generation's Motley, Mo Motley crew, but more rooted in the Sex Pistols and Zeppelin than Motley's New York Dolls meets Kiss. In the same way that Nikki understood the role of each of the members of Motley, I thought he might be able to do the same for Slash, Axel, Izzy, Duff, and Steven, and I hope GNR might learn something from Nikki since he had crawled from the bottom of the dirtiest street in Hollywood, which was also their birthing place to the top. But Nikki was in his strung out narcissistic asshole days and he kept blowing me off and not even watching the video of GNR that I had sent to him. Do I think he could have done a good job producing the album? Given the state he was in, probably not. Now Slash even commented on this saying, you know, that's funny, I never knew about any of this. It is true that Zutat was desperate to find somebody to produce Appetite for Destruction who'd be able to deal with us. I remember that Paul Stanley from KISS came down at one point, but we were way too much for him. Now the timeline doesn't really seem to make sense. He says it's April of 87. Appetite was recorded between January 18th to March 23rd of 1987. So by the time April rolled around, the album was already finished and probably being mixed at that point in time because it was coming out on July 21st, 1987. 
Now, there was a really great interview that Tom Zutat did with LA Weekly where he talked about the recording of Appetite, and Art Tavana did a great job with this interview. So he talked a bit about how hard it was to find a producer to record Appetite. So Tom Zutat said, I didn't want the band to be GMO'd, as he put it. A lot of people wanted to overproduce the band or just didn't get it. Nikki Six thought the band was crap. We never considered someone like Mutt Lang because his stuff was too slick. And in a separate interview, Dove said Mutt Lang was too expensive as well. He said, we only considered only about five guys. One of them was Max Norman, who worked for Ozzy, who wasn't interested because GNR wasn't metal enough for him. We also listened to Nazareth's Hair of the Dog, so we invited Manny Charlton to Sound City, but his personality wasn't a good fit. He was too nice, but his sessions were bootlegged and they're out there somewhere. And by the time of me recording this, it's already out on the Appetite box set because they released all those sessions. He was then asked, so how did Mike Klink, an engineer who had never produced a record before, become the producer of Appetite? To which Tom Zutat said, well, I chose him. It took some selling on my part, but it goes back to UFO Strangers in the Night, and Mike worked on that record. So I knew he could capture their live sound and run the room, and he was a consummate recording engineer and understood how to capture a band on tape, which meant getting a great performance out of them. So you guys may be wondering, you know, what was Tom Zutat's role in the studio? He was the A&R guy, but he was still pretty heavily involved with the recording of the record. So he said his role really was to keep the band focused, make sure that what was recorded had electricity to it, but to also make sure that, uh, you know, they were able to be in the studio when they needed to be there. He said, I mean, Izzy was on smack, Duff was drinking too much, Axel was in his own head, defining the fine line between genius and insanity. So part of the secret was making sure to capture them when genius struck. I did something pretty unprecedented as well and requested Given give me, Geffen give me a private purchase order book so that I could book studio time whenever, even at three in the morning. And if Mike was awake, he'd show up. If not, one of his engineers would fill in. Gene R could be very time consuming, he said.